Hey everybody, this is Chad from Sticks Blog. It's been quite a while since I've done any sort of gear review video, uh, but I wanted to take the time to do a, uh, a long-term report on this light. Um, I feel like it's, it's time to do so. Uh, this is the Zebralite H51, uh, and just so you know, uh, these are actually not available any longer. They've replaced it with the H52 models. Um, but I bought this light in February 2012. Since then, I've taken it on every single backpacking trip that I've been on, uh, as well as used it at home, around the house, uh, in the car, um, camping trips, you know, just car camping trips, um, and then I've read it a lot to read at night. Um, I found that this light, for me, has been more than exceptional. Um, I still get a lot of questions about it, uh, comments about it on YouTube, um, on my blog, and I still see a lot of uh, questions about it. Uh, people, you know, just asking basic general light questions uh, on different backpacking forms. So I figured I'd take the time today and just do a long-term review uh, of this light. Like I said, I bought it February 2012. That's going to put it approximately four years and eight months. I can't tell you how many hours I've actually used this since then, um, but that's how long I've had it, and I will just go ahead and say I've used it a lot. Um, Essentially, with this light, um, since owning it, I can honestly say that there's not been another flashlight that I've looked at and felt that I needed to buy, uh, even just to play with, tinker with, and try it out. Now, I have looked at other flashlights. I've been interested, but none of them has ever made me think, ah, maybe I should just dish out the money for that just to check it out. I know I love my Zebra light, but let me just check it out. hasn't happened. Uh, this is the only piece of gear that I've bought since backpacking uh, that is pretty much maintained that, uh, that, that presence for me in my backpack. Um, so real quick, I uh, just want to say to begin with, I am not a big circuitry guy. I can't tell you all the ins and outs of how flashlights are, are uh, wired. I can't tell you a lot about all the different battery types and, or at least, you know, the functions and the pros and cons. Um, so saying that, this is just kind of a basic look at it, uh, simply what works for me and, uh, and what I look at it and, and get out of it. So don't expect this to be some technical uh, review. If you want that, you need to go to like Candle Power Forums or something like that. They've got all kinds of stuff over there. Um, so anyway, a couple of things about this light that I just kind of want to touch on why I like it so much. First off, I want to talk about price. Uh, when I bought this light, I was online late one night for several hours contemplating buying a Phoenix LD-01. Uh, and at that time, I think it was $39. And I was kind of thinking, you know, that's kind of expensive. Do I really want to spend that money? Uh, however, I ended up later that night buying the Zebra Light H51, which was $64. And if you'll notice, I said $64. I didn't get this at a discount. I don't owe Zebra Light or any other company any uh, credit for sending me this light, I paid for it with my own money. So take this review for what it's worth. Um, but anyway, so $64. I had previously had a Petzl E-Light, and one dark night, unexpectedly, about midnight, I had to hike out. It was only about a two-mile hike out, but it was dark. There was clouds in the sky, no moon, uh, and it was just dark. My Petzl E-Light really let me down. I ended up using a little keychain light, and it worked much better than that. So since then, I decided I needed to buy something better. At that time, I went back to using my, uh, my Princeton Tech Fuel, which was a great headlamp. There were a couple of things about it that I didn't like. I'll touch on in a little bit. Um, but I, was, I started looking, and that's what led me to looking at the LD-01 and eventually the Zebra Light. Um, so price. I said I paid $64 for it, and at that time, I thought that was a, a lot of money. Um, i got to say, now, after owning it, for all this time, um, I'm going to say that I feel like it was well worth $64, and I'll even go as far as saying that was a bargain, in my opinion, because this has been an excellent life for me. Um, and it still it still functions just the same as it did the day I bought it. It even looks almost just the same. Um, saying that, I'm not real real uh, aggressive or abusive with with all of my gear, um, but the headlamp, it just there's no reason to, in my experience. Um, so anyway, 64 bucks. Um, initially, for those that may not buy a lot of expensive things, that can sound like a lot of money, but I'm telling you, at least in my experience, what I paid for, what I got, uh, is well worth uh, that cost. Um, and especially whenever there are a number of other flashlights out there in the same price range, uh, as well as even uh, quite a bit more expensive. Um, 
So I'm not comparing this to that. I'm just saying this is my, my thought process behind what I paid for. Um, so a flashlight is meant to light things up. And this probably won't be a good representation because it's daylight. Um, but this, this flashlight does it well. Uh, there's actually six settings, seven if you want to count the strobe feature. Uh, and all six settings I've found to be quite adequate for me. Um, that there is the low setting. And that's the high low setting. That's the medium setting. And that's the high medium setting. And then that's the high setting, the low high setting. Well, no, that's the low high setting, and that's the high high setting. Um, this light on the low low setting, it's 0.2 lumens. On the high low setting, it's 2.5 lumens. On the first medium setting, it's 8 lumens. On the second medium setting, it's 30 lumens. Uh, the first high setting is 100 lumens, and the second high setting is 200 lumens. Now for me, the uh, 0.2 lumen is basically equivalent to moonlight, and I found this really great uh, while I'm reading in bed next to my wife so I don't want to wake her up, um, or if I'm in my tent reading, or if I'm just kind of mulling about somewhere where it's not super dark outside and I just need a little extra bump in light. Uh, 2.5 lumens, which is the high-low, um, that's really good for around camp, um, especially if there's like a fire or something. Um, I've even found that on sometimes during some, some night hiking or some early morning hiking that the high low setting is, is more than enough for me. Uh, like I said, that is 2.5 lumens, so it's not much, but it, it is enough. Um, the medium settings I generally use for if I am hiking late at night or, or early in the morning, uh, it's either 8 or 30 lumens, and I just put it on whichever setting I need it to be. And then um, high 100, 200 lumens, I don't ever have to really use that. I play with it. Uh, I have used it on occasion to throw a bear line late at night, another dark cloud or cloudy night, uh, throw on a bear line, and that's come in handy. Um, other than that, just impressing my friends with it. Um, so this does a really great job at lighting things up. Sure, you can get them that, that light them up way more. It's got like a thousand lumens, even more or less. Um, but it, to me, 200 lumens has been more than I've ever needed, so there's no reason for me to want more light. Um, I'm not using it to ride a bike or anything like that, so I don't need super, super bright light. That's just way out there. But I'm going to tell you, 200 lumens will light a place up. Uh, it's really, really handy. Um, and then as far as turning the light on, I just showed you um, how it works. Kind of point it down here. Um, it's, it, it only has one button, as you can see. And uh, at first, when I first got this, that was kind of like, okay, i got to figure out how all this works. Um, but it's really simple. Uh, you just do a quick click and it's going to turn it on the highest setting. Uh, and before I go any farther, I just want to say that uh, um, whenever you put it on the first or second, low, medium, or high, it remembers that setting whenever you go through it, whenever you cycle through it the next time. So um, it doesn't go through each individual setting. It just goes low, medium, high. Uh, and if I want to change the, the one or two setting in that setting, I have to double click. So like I said, just a quick click is going to turn it on super high. So if I just need light real fast, I just reach up and hit that button real fast, it's going to light things up. Now if I don't want to turn it on uh, immediately so that it's so much like that, I just press and hold for just a second. It's more like a press than a click. And you can see that's the, uh, the low setting there. Um, now if I want to cycle to medium, I just hold the button, and now that's medium. If I want to cycle to high, hold it again and it cycles through. So you can see how it pretty much works there, and you just stop on whichever setting you want. Now, if I want to go to a different setting, the second setting uh, in each setting, I know that's confusing, but it's really not. Uh, I just double click. Well, turned it off there. It's kind of hard to do when I'm. Anyway, I don't know if you can see that. Let me go to a different one. Actually, that is that's the that's the low low setting, and there it is. Now. Um, there's a strobe feature on this. Honestly, I've never used it, and I'm pretty sure I think the way you have to do it is I think you have to double click like six or seven times on one setting, and that is kind of a bit awkward to get to. Um, however, that's not, nothing I ever needed, so I don't really consider that a problem, uh, but it is there if I ever need it. Um, I do want to say about the button, too. Um, the button, you can see it's textured, uh, so it's really easy to feel. Uh, it is kind of inset so that things don't bump it. Um, some people report that it might get bumped and turned on 
inside the backpack. Um, I've never had that ex happen to me. So one thing people do is just kind of give the cap a little twist here. Um, I've never had to do that. I've never had it accidentally turn on. Uh, it's just my experience. Um, but the, the, the button, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's very clearly audible. You can definitely hear it, and you can also I, I can also feel it very distinguishable when I press it. So there's no, um, the button is really, really still holding up well. It supposedly has a 200,000 cycle operating life. I don't know how many times I've pressed it. It's got to be quite a number of times, but, uh, but it's still holding up fine. Um, I mentioned a while ago the batteries. Um, kind of touch on a couple of things, and this is the part where I'm kind of fuzzy on. Uh, as far as the circuitry, this is a regulated flashlight, and as far as I understand, what that means is um, whenever you turn a flashlight on, if I was to just leave it on, uh, if, the, if the flashlight is not regulated, as that battery dies, the light will just slowly dim. However, with a regulated light, um, it's going to uh, use that power more efficiently, and it's going to provide a steady amount of power until that battery gets basically to the point to where it just can't do it no more and then it's going to slowly or, or maybe quickly dim out. So it's going to give you the same consistency light until that battery is pretty much dead rather than just slowly going dead. Now to me that's not a big thing. Uh, I do from basic reading what I've read, uh, typically your regulated lights are going to be more of a higher quality uh, so that's, that's nice but for function wise I haven't really found that to be anything that I've been excited about. Uh, for me what I found is with this light as it's starting to die uh, simply what will happen is uh, when it first starts to die, it won't turn on the high setting. It will only go low and medium, and then it will kick down to the low setting. So that gives me plenty of time to realize that, hey, I need to change the battery. Uh, and that's another thing I want to talk about. This light uses uh, AA batteries. I find for me that's, uh, that was my, my choice. Uh, I like that because it's really easy to find AA batteries. Um, you can, I can carry an extra with me. It's very lightweight. Um, I can find them at random gas stations, uh, potentially other devices I may be carrying may use them, um, and even other hikers may have one that they can loan me and I can, you know, give them one back, a new one back next time we get to a town or something. So um, I really like that it uses double A's. Uh, it will take lithium, which is what I have here. This is an L91, um, and it will also take, of course, alkaline or uh, rechargeable. Um, I did buy the Interloops when I first bought it, but they're a little heavier. I don't really care. I don't really, I don't know, there wasn't as much to offer for me. Um, the Interloops, they don't have as much energy capacity as a lithium battery does. They don't operate as well in cold weather, um, and they're just heavier. So that's why I go with lithiums. Of course, I could use alkalines too, but there's just, uh, to me, the lithium is the best, uh, the best option. Um, and as you see, if it does go out in the middle of the night, very easy to change out. Um, just unscrew the cap. You can feel the nipple on the top of the battery, and you just know that the nipple goes in. Once you get done, put the cap back on, and that's very easy to do in the dark. Um, and then your light works again. Um, I've never had to do that in the field. Um, I've always, like I said, been able to change it out in plenty of time. Um, I said uh, earlier that I'd used a Princeton Fuel, Princeton Tech Fuel. Great light. Uh, one thing I really did not like about it is you had to use kind of the little clip on the headband to pry the battery door open, and then it took three AAA batteries, uh, and they had different polarity. So it was much harder to change if I ever needed to change it in the dark. Plus, it took three extra batteries. It took three batteries versus one. Um, so uh, I prefer this. Uh, and I want to talk about weight too. Um, before I get to that, a couple other things, or one other thing I want to talk about is just durability. Um, this light, this zebra light, is cut from a single piece of uh, aluminum um, stock, bar stock. So basically they just cut a bar stock off. So it's all basically one piece and then they just milled out the holes to put the button and of course the LED and then of course the cap. But it's just one piece. It's not a bunch of little pieces uh, glued together or screwed together or anything. Uh, plus it's anodized aluminum. Uh, which just kind of increases this resistance to wear and gives it a little extra strength. Uh, but this flashlight is super durable. Um, I feel easily like I could drop it on rocks, uh, maybe throw it against rocks, um, and I think it's going to do a great job protecting the circuitry inside. Um, I'm not going to go and do it just to do it, 
but it's just kind of an extra peace of mind that I don't really necessarily have to have, but it's there. Uh, so uh, durability is really great. And all of that talk leads me to weight. So as I said, uh, easy battery store or easy battery usage, uh, one battery usage, durable, shines really bright, easy to use once I got used to it. Um, and uh, it's just an awesome light for me. And all of that and the configuration I have it here with this headband and the lithium AA battery comes in at 1.99 ounces, or just to be fair, let's call it 2 ounces. Uh, my Princeton Tech fuel was like 2.3 ounces, I believe, with three lithium AAA batteries. Uh, so this is lighter than that, has more, uh, in my opinion, more function, more use, um, lighter weight, and it, it's better. It's just better. It's more durable. It's stronger. It's easier to use, I think. Um, much better light. Of course, much better than my Petzl E-Light I had because this actually brights things up. Um, I can actually see things when I need to with this one. So, uh, 2.5 ounces for everything. And this is another reason I wanted to make this video. A lot of people ask me about my headband here. Um, all I did was buy this elastic uh, from Walmart. I just kind of cut it off the size that I needed to go around my head. And then I cut these two little loops here. And all I did was sew these loops together so that they would fit around the flashlight. And then I put this longer piece, I just threaded the loop through the loops so that they were in the loops. And then I just simply sewed the back of it together. So that works really well. Now this will wear out. It'll lose its elasticity. Um, this is actually the third, I think, headband I've had to use over time. Um, but it's not something that happens just, you know, overnight. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, so I can kind of start getting the feeling. Um, actually, the first one that I had, I ended up just cutting that little piece out because it started losing its elasticity, and then I just folded that part over and sewed it again, and then that tightened it back up. But I have plenty of this stuff, so the next one I decided to just make a whole brand new one. Uh, I've never had to replace these here. These are actually the same ones that I made from the get-go. Um, the only thing I've changed out is this piece here. So, uh, two ounces. So anyway, um, that is my long-term review of the ZebraLite H51. Like I said, you can't buy these any longer. You can buy the H52s. Uh, ZebraLite also makes other lights like the H600, 601, 602, something or another. It takes different batteries. They make the HC or H32s, I think, which takes the CR2032 batteries. Um, there's different versions of this light. This is the one I chose to go with. I will, I will not end this video with it being a perfect light, though. Um, if I had to give this light one knock, I would say that it's the cool white light. Um, it uses a cool white light instead of a neutral light. So whenever it shines on things, it gives it a little more of a bluish tint than, uh, than it should have. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, the cool white light is actually a... Um, it actually is brighter. It has a brighter intensity than the neutral light. But in my opinion, I think that I would, if I have to buy this thing again, which I'm not going to until it's actually time to do so, if I were to have to buy it again, I would go with one that had neutral lighting just to give it more of a realistic look when I'm looking at things. Um, because the cool white light, it just kind of gives everything a glow, kind of a, a white, or not a white, a white bluish kind of glow about things. And it's just a little strange looking. Uh, it doesn't change things really. It's just I know it's not what it's supposed to look like um, because of the light. Um, which that's one reason too why I try not to use a higher setting than I need because the lighter uh, or the lesser lower power settings seem not to have as much of a, a glow to it whenever it's shining on things. So, uh, so there's that. Uh, but for me, this has been an excellent light. Uh, I have no, no issues whatsoever about this light. Uh, I'm going to use it until this thing just completely stops working. Um, so anyway, that's my review. If you have any comments or questions, just post them below and I'll do my best to reply to any comments, answer any questions. And uh, guys, I appreciate you watching. Sorry it's been a long video, but if you've watched my videos before, you understand that. So until next time, see you later.